what's up y'all welcome back to my channel on today's video i'm gonna be talking about my experience so far as a first time home buyer in north carolina so if you want to learn more about what that looks like for me please continue to watch this video the real estate market has been pretty crazy we have been actively searching looking at houses touring for a month now so it's only been about three and a half weeks and it has been pretty tough i work full-time in my business i had to wait two years to be able to qualify to get a house with my employment right because when you're self-employed you need to have two years worth of tax statements so i've been waiting to get a house and wanting to get a house for a very long time and had to wait until about now because i hit my second year in business in november it's currently february and man i did not know it was going to be anything like literally um every house that's on the market there are so many offers that's going in for that one house right and all of them are above the asking price like above what the seller is asking for if you want to get a house be prepared to have a good amount of money down for the seller and then also be prepared to go up above asking price this is not 2008 2010 where you can negotiate with the seller and be like i'm not taking the house as is you're, you're gonna have to make these repairs you're gonna have to do this and this and this to the house um i want your patio furniture this and that like no literally how it is right now there's no room for negotiation houses are selling for way more than what they are listed for right so for example um you have a house that's listed for 200,000 and remember I told you earlier that there's like 10 people coming to see the same house like let me give you a quick like story time because my fiance sister just literally sold her house right so we are in like the Raleigh Durham area of North Carolina which is often referred to as the triangle and she lives close to like a very popular shopping center right we listed her house for three hundred and sixty five thousand dollars and it ended up selling at sixty thousand dollars above the asking price with thirty thousand dollars due diligence um that is a lot of money and this could really be a very intimidating process for a first time home buyer like myself if you are a first time home buyer or if you're considering buying a house in the future like let me know your thoughts as well i want to know if you're going through the same thing in your city what city you're from or just deciding to wait like i'm really curious because i am kind of in the boat right now where i'm telling will i'm like man should we just wait it out a little bit and he's like no like literally it's now or never right so and just like let me know if you're in that situation because i would literally love to know this is what's pretty much been going on with us so far we have been pre-approved for about a month and um i already knew a realtor so just right away we let her know that we got pre-approved shopped around a little bit with the mortgage lenders just to get an idea of what our um interest rates and stuff would be and ended up going with her preferred lender because of the um, amount of time that it would take to close we are not trying to go as high as what we've been pre-approved for because we don't want to be house rich and cash poor like um eyl is a really good channel to watch if you're interested in like the real estate market as well they talk about a lot of that with real estate professionals but so we got pre-approved and ever since we got pre-approved we've been actively looking we've been using like apps like zillow realtor.com and even just driving around um places that we would potentially want to live and seeing what's available right the thing that we pretty much understand now that we didn't know when we first started this process is that we're probably going to end up with a house that we don't 100 love but it hits about 80 percent of our check marks of things that we need in the house and um so we're willing to work with that this is our first home it's a starter home it's not going to be the forever home but we need to do something because especially with rental rates going out of the park right now especially where we live the one bedrooms are like fourteen hundred dollars a month like yeah i'm not doing that um it's in our best interest to just buy a house some things that we definitely want is enough space in the back of the house because as i mentioned before i'm a business owner and i'm looking to build on the property but that's another conversation for another day and i also have a dog i want her to have enough space but as far as like the living space um definitely at least two bathrooms and we really don't care about the amount of bedrooms um just enough space for us to be comfortable like we are engaged now and so you know we just want to be able to live freely in our own space like that we own where we are 
it has also just recently been announced that Google, Apple, and I think Amazon are coming. So there is literally a flood of people that's coming to Raleigh Durham from up north, right? So what I believe is happening is that these people that are moving from like New York and stuff like that, and they got they're selling their house and they have all this equity and all this cash, they're coming out here and to them they're looking at North Carolina like, yo, I could buy this three hundred thousand dollar house. What? Like in New York, I just sold my house for six hundred k, you know? And they have a lot of money to put down and we also having these issues with investors coming and buying out all the the properties or like rehabbing properties and taking them up like in price by like a hundred thousand dollars right so cash is king right the sellers they're looking at it like it's pretty much like black and white how much money do you have i'm going with the highest bidder right and so for people like us where we don't already have a property to pull equity out of or we don't have these large funds of cash right to pull money out of it's hard like it's literally pretty much like ridiculous at this point just to recap the first thing i learned was that we're probably gonna have to get a house that we don't love but it works right the second thing is that there's these two forms that I didn't really know of before I started the process that are pretty important. The first one is just, is a disclosure form, right? So that is basically what the seller provides to like potential buyers that just basically goes through a list of what they know or recognize is wrong with the house, right? So they'll be like, this house has foundation issues yes no or no representation representation means that you have no idea right, so with the disclosure form say the seller put yes or no on the disclosure form and it comes back that something that they said yes or no to came up the opposite way right then they would be held liable for it but if they put no representation like just say that they don't know if anything comes up they're not responsible so on a lot of disclosure forms there are some people that just put no no representation straight down the list and this could be things like termites um foundation issues like uh covenants and all this kind of stuff so you gotta watch out for that thankfully there was one house that will and i had looked into and um it was pretty far out but we were willing to do it and it was checked all the boxes but when we finally got the disclosure form it said that the house had issues with termites and it also had foundation issues so that was good to know the second form that we didn't know about is called an appraisal addendum and that is a form basically saying that if the house appraises for anything less than what you offered on the house then you are responsible for covering the difference right so let me talk a little bit about that so with the current housing market if there is a house that is listed for a certain price right you have to go above that price to be able to even be competitive in this market. Let's say, throwing out random random easy numbers, let's say a house was listed for $200,000, right? You put in an offer for $230,000 and they accepted your offer, right? Nice. So their $230,000 offer, let's say you put down $10,000 due diligence and that's the money that you offer the seller showing that you are genuinely interested in this house purchase and um, you're willing to go through with it, right? So you get an appraisal and let's say the appraisal says that the house is worth $210,000, right? Now it is your responsibility as the buyer to front that $20,000 difference. And if you don't have the money, guess what? You lose your due diligence money. It's very important that you as a buyer, once you're starting to put in your offers, that you are thinking about it thoroughly and looking at the area and just not throwing out random numbers just because you are pre-approved for it. Because if the house is not appraised at the value of which you offered, you are only gonna get the mortgage loan for 210,000. The rest of the money you need to come up with and if you don't, you're beat. All your savings are gone. So you've been trying to, you know, just keep in mind and it's been pretty tough. Like, we obviously don't wanna lose money. Like, we've saved to be able to do this and it's a large risk, it's a huge risk. So, <sighs> there's that. Let me tell you about my story so far of what happened with the houses. So I told you about the one that um, was a little bit away that had the termites and foundation issues so we walked away from that. There's a plethora of things that we're willing to negotiate but foundation and termite issues are not one of them. Like we're not doing that, right? So let's talk about this other house that we were interested in was in a neighboring um, city and um, this house was pretty kind of low-key like abandoned. There was somebody that lived in it and the guy died in the house um 
and his daughter was selling the property. So the house was built in 19 like 80 something like 1983 or something and the guy has lived in there since then and has done absolutely no type of upgrading to the house. So literally we knew that if we had the house we would have at least had to put at least $20,000 to $30,000 worth of work into it to feel comfortable to live in the house. The house that we're renting, the lease doesn't end until June. So we're like, all right, it's January, February. So we got a couple months to at least, you know, get the ball moving like and not be there. Out of the house, pretty much we're like um, looking around. We're like, okay, there's enough space in the back for us to do the things we want to do with the space in the back. Um, there's a shed. The house is needs a lot of updating. It needs all new appliances like floors, painting, all of that stuff. It needs to be done. The way that we found out that the guy died in the house because there was a nosy neighbor that was touring the house that knew him and was basically like you guys should buy this house it's an amazing neighborhood like it needed some work um the guy who lived here was super nice like you might see his spirit in here and stuff like that because he never left the house but um it's a great house like he's a great guy and i'm like oh that is like one thing about me like i watch a lot of those scary shows so like i know um i believe in the spiritual world and like i believe that that kind of stuff exists At first i'm like Oh, I don't know because there might be a little attachment or something like that, but I was willing to compromise, right? So cool. For that house, we were willing to go uh, $30,000 over asking price with $10,000 down in due diligence, right? And our realtor was on her way to submit an offer. She said that and she's like, hey, I'm about to put a, um, I'm about to put in an offer for the house, right? Just letting the other, the seller's agent know. They were like, hey, we just accepted an all cash offer. We're so sorry, but this was something that was just too uh, good to pass off, pass, pass up on. So ended up losing that one before it even started. I'm actually a little happy that that didn't work out. We really love that house because it reminded us of the mountains and the mountains is some place that we really love and enjoy. Um, but. It would have been a lot of work for us, especially as first time home buyers, it would have been sweat equity. Like the thing is, as soon as we fix it up, it would have likely appreciated in value by a whole lot. Um, but that was something that um, I am grateful that didn't work out for us. House number two was another one that was, um, this one is still pretty fresh we just found out that we didn't get this house yesterday uh but for this house we also did ten thousand dollars due diligence and we went twenty thousand over asking price and the reason why we didn't go um as high over asking price is because um this one is a little bit farther from the city so this one is about an hour away and we understood that to get this house we would have to drive an hour to get to work like i would have to drive an hour to get to my warehouse will would have to drive an hour to get to his job Ooh, we're like we don't have to go this high because this is in the country like there are cows and horses like there's literally just farms here like that's it right there's a couple of houses scrambled in but like it's just pretty much a farmland right and so we went twenty thousand over and we went ten thousand dollars due diligence so we were risking ten thousand dollars to get this house and we ended up losing that offer as well which is crazy to me because we really thought that we had that one and we we're like man i don't know what to do because that house already had a shed and a workshop like i wouldn't have to do absolutely anything so um yeah that happened Pretty much understand at this point that what we are looking for is probably going to be in house number two or three because this is our very first real estate purchase it's not our forever home it's just something that we can live in and build equity while all this like mayhem with the housing market is going on and um just pretty much go from there dying to know how you guys feel about the housing market do you guys feel like it's gonna get any better do you think it's gonna get worse do you think it's gonna stay the same i'm really curious to know because i have no idea there's so much information online about what's happening and um it's it's just it's just tough it's a tough situation for anyone renters and buyers this is also another thing that i was telling my fiance about the other day i was telling him that you know there's a lot of people online arguing about whether or not you should rent or buy which i uh, totally understand the argument of i don't want to be tied down anywhere so i'm gonna rent so that if i want to move i'm i'm ready right how i feel is a lot of people say why would you rent when you could just buy a house and, and build equity and own it but that's not the issue currently in today's time the issue is getting the house because you are not gonna get a house if you do not have any money like pretty much 
if you don't already have a house to get equity pull money out of to qualify for a house or if you don't come from rich parents and have all these resources to get money from it's very tough out here so if you don't have like savings like i understand like it's pretty hard but um yeah just let me know how you guys feel about the housing market if we do find a house and go on the contract i will let you know because we are actively trying and just throwing darts and seeing what hits but if you enjoyed today's video and you want to see how this fiasco ends up i'm going to try my best to document the entire journey um so don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button below but until then i will see you in the next video